ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਲਾਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਚ ਆਪਣੇ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਸੀ ਬ੍ਰੈਂਪਟਨ ਸਿਵਿਕ ਹਸਪੀਟਲ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਚ ਕਿ ਓਲਡ ਪੀਲ ਮੈਮੋਰੀਅਲ ਸਾਈਟ ਤੇ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਪੁਰਾਣਾ ਬ੍ਰੈਂਪਟਨ ਹਸਪੀਟਲ ਸੀ ਉਥੇ ਫਾਈਨਲੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਿੰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਨੇ ਫੰਡਸ ਰਿਲੀਜ਼ ਕੀਤੇ ਨੇ ਨਵਾਂ ਹਸਪੀਟਲ ਬਣਨ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੀ ਡੈਮੋਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ 4.3 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰਸ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਸਿਲਸਿਲੇ 'ਚ ਟਾਊਨ ਹਾਲ ਮੀਟਿੰਗ ਹੋਈ ਪਬਲਿਕ ਮੀਟਿੰਗ ਜਿਹਦੇ 'ਚ ਪਬਲਿਕ ਨੂੰ ਓਪਨ ਸੱਦਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਆਣ ਤੇ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਪੁੱਛਣ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਦੱਸਣ ਉਹਦੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਫਿਲਮ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਦਿਖਾਵਾਂਗੇ I hope you like it. Uh, we're going to have um, X-ray CT of some dialysis of the new one. Are they also going to be the civic? Okay. And the other one. <laughs> that's three for three. Okay. That's three for three. Okay. Don't worry about it. I know. What about parking costs?
For example, Mississauga was a much smaller city and they built uh, Credit Valley, they didn't propose Trillium. Um, so I'm a little concerned about that, I guess. Is there any um, way that there could still be um, a second emergency room or an emergency room uh, unit added at the Memorial Hospital? Or, you know, as the population continues to grow, we're looking at this thing being completed in 2016 or so. If, if it warrants having two emergency rooms by that time, um, are, there, are there some plans where we could put that in place? Yeah, I, I think the answer is yes. I mean, it, uh, and you've given that commitment before. That, uh, at the moment, the uh, uh, it looks like an urgent care center actually serves the population better than having a second emergency department present. But John, if, uh, uh, if things change, uh, we're going to change, and it will turn into an emergency department. That's great, because uh, you know, these plans take a really long time to put in place, and uh, I think everyone just wants to make sure they continue to grow with the city as the city continues to grow. Um, my next question, I guess, has to deal with funding from the province. Um, so I noticed up there that I guess the funds aren't going to actually need to be available until a project is completed. Um, has there been any sort of commitment from the province on, on when this will be set aside in the budget, or any idea of when that might happen? So, uh, as Matt as Matt has indicated, the, the province has uh, has approved this project. Uh, the province, the Ministry of Health, will be working with the hospital to um, confirm its the, the funding source. So there will be an actual commitment that will come through from the Ministry of Health to the hospital to uh, to, to both uh, Matt and Neil that will uh, confirm their funding commitment to the hospital. Okay, that's a little concerned, but you know, making sure the yeah. money's actually there because that's a really once the money's there, then we'll know for sure it's happening. You know, for sure, talk is, is cheaper than actually putting it down in the budget. See, um, one, of, one of the things, one of the things that the, the alternative financing procurement method uh, instills is, besides instilling a discipline on the on the developer to actually develop a project project uh, property with the requirements, it also instills a bit of discipline on the funding agencies to actually provide the funds, because when substantial completion occurs. Uh, the the uh, developers are expecting to actually get paid uh, for the work that they've done. Okay. It looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, first of all, I'd like to thank all the uh, community members for, for attending today. It really makes a big difference when we have community members here. It shows that there's solidarity. I see people from all the walks of life. And it's the strength of the community that can really make a difference. So first, I'd like to congratulate all the people who came out today to show their concerns. It really is the, the community that can make a difference. I'd also like to thank the hospital uh, executives and the staff for actually hosting this because it's, uh, it's a big task to do. Um, you'll hear a lot of upset people and it's, uh, it's a noble uh, decision to take this uh, forum so that people can voice their concerns. So I congratulate you as well for holding, the, uh, holding this town hall. Uh, I'd like to ask essentially what more can be done? I know that the community is concerned about this. They want to know what more can they do to put pressure on the government to make this happen. Uh, I can give you a quick update in Queen's Park. We tabled a bill uh, last week uh, in, in which we required that the government um, cost out, give a plan, a concrete plan, so there's been promises made and promises broken. So we required the government, this bill passed second reading, where we required the government to give a clear plan for costing or when that will begin, when the building will begin, and when there's the anticipated completion. So that's one thing that we've tried to do. Uh, the second thing in my meeting speech, I made it clear that Brampton, BBC, verging on 500,000 in terms of population, needs at least two hospitals. That's something that we need, and it's a basic requirement for, for a city of that size. What more, I mean, I'm, I'm in the opposition uh, as a representative, what more uh, can we do, can I do, to forward this plan? Because I think it's very important that we have two hospitals that people more be reopened, be rebuilt. It's something that the community deserves and needs. What more can be done? Political aspect and what more for the community so we can organize the community to make this happen. I, I, I think uh, someone has an idea for you here. Uh, Neil? Yeah. <laughs> for those who have been around me for the last uh, year and a bit, uh, will know that I uh, wear my button with some pride. Um, and I, I got a few in my pocket, and I got uh, a few hundred, uh, not a thousand in my office. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more that, that I think. All of the statements, the, the alignments of what the bureaucrats and the politicians are saying about this proceeding um, are all positive. But it doesn't mean we should become contented 
and not continue to uh, voice, uh, 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 raise our voices to the importance of getting this done. And so, I mean, it may be a small measure, but I'm telling you this button, I think convinced enough people around the council table, and it being unanimous, to uh, put $60 million into this project. So, uh, we, we're going to give you other ways to stay connected, clearly speak to your MPPs, uh, to uh, your local politicians. Don't throw these up. Uh, continue to uh, uh, raise your voice and make sure this happens. One, one quick plug as well, we've got a great, uh, at our website, we have a place where you can sign up as your support, and, and again, um, uh, Susan Dirk's at the back of the room, if you like, put it in the home slur and you'll find our website, uh, and, and we want to get names on there, to Neil's point, we want to continue to show the great support of this community for this project. First of all, I'd like to uh, offer my thanks to Neil as well for standing up and taking on this particular project. It's been a real treat working with, uh, with Neil on this. I've been, uh, I've been a volunteer in the city of Brampton, the town of Brampton, uh, for, for quite some time. And this has been a real uh, passion for me as a city of Brampton. As I said before, I got my ass slapped for the first time I'm here. <laughs> and, uh, I, what? Uh, I, would, uh, I would dearly like to be there to take the first swipe at the demolition. But as the, uh, as the uh, elected official of that particular area where that hospital is, I would hope that, I know the answer here, and I know why it's going to help out with this, but I, I, I really hope that we do a good communication plan regarding the demolition and what the neighborhood can expect and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the reason I bring that up now is because we just started a major demolition in our downtown regarding the Central Quadrant. Within hours of starting the demolition, it was complaints to the neighbors with the dust, with the noise, and et cetera, et cetera. So I'd like to uh, be a little proactive in who we are with this kind of thing. But I'd just like to tell the, uh, the group here uh, as to what the, uh, the communication plan is. And while I'm at the mic here, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out tonight and showing your interest. And I know there's going to be a lot of happening. Thanks for the question. Actually, we do have a fairly robust uh, communication plan. I'm looking at our, our chief communications officer, Susan Derrick. Um, Susan and I actually sat down with the city earlier this week to go over that plan and make sure that the city understood what we were trying to do and that we had those linkages. As we know that a number of phone calls might go into our council's offices and others in the city. So we, have, we are setting up linkages between the city and ourselves. Um, we will have a hotline um, that will be staffed, so anyone that um, has any questions can call that hotline we will be getting it back to them. They can have access through uh, the web and email also for that. Um, we will be doing ongoing um, kind of drops in the neighborhood of information. We will also have ongoing um, uh, meetings with the community to answer any questions. Um, they will be, there will be a, a list of people that they can contact. So there's a few contact first and then we'll cast it down from there. So a whole, a very robust communications plan that um, has been put in place and is just getting kicked off now as, as we move forward. And there's a piece of that for demolition, but it will continue on through the whole planning process and then into construction. Mm -hmm.